classroom management can make or break your teaching career. Hey, Bianca here, and welcome to Teach Like Bianca. In today's video, I'm covering my best classroom management strategies and even answering the question of why I don't post rules up in my classroom. So the reason I don't post rules in my classroom is because I never went back and referred to that. Last time I did it was probably my second year of teaching, you know, where you have your classroom develop rules together. You go and have all your students write their name on them because it solidifies that we're gonna, it's a contract and we're gonna follow these rules. Then we're gonna post them up in the classroom. Well, I did that before, but I have never went back and reviewed those rules again. So some, you're supposed to go back and review them, you know, maybe after winter break or something like that. But I never did. From my point of view, I have reviewed this time and time and again. And I found out that one of the biggest reasons why I didn't post rules and follow these directions that everybody was doing as a teacher was because I felt like my students already knew the expectation of what it is to be a student and leaving them with that expectation. I don't have to create and develop rules in the classroom, which were all generic rules. Like don't blurt out while the teacher is talking, raise your hand if you need to go to the bathroom, something along those lines, having an expectation, a classroom expectation that is different from what's happening in other classrooms possibly, or maybe it could be similar to that classroom it was easier for students to follow an expectation than just to post some generic rules on the wall in your classroom. Oh, for the majority of my teaching career, I have taught middle school students. So they have already followed expectations that they already know how to do for six or seven years. So it might look different for a first grader or a second grader that's still getting used of what it's like to be a student. And I've taught students with social emotional disabilities, um, behavior plans, FBAs, functional behavior assessments, uh, and as well as just the whole gamut of uh, different types of students at the middle school level. I've dealt with defiance and disrespect in some way, shape or form, but it all came down to these expectations. So if you have students who are off task, for example, maybe a student has their head down and you go and you ask them, what should you be doing? I guarantee you, they're gonna know what they should be doing. And they know having their head down or whatever negative off test behavior that, that they're doing, they know that's not what they should be doing. So you have to lead them and guide them to follow the expectations you have set in the classroom. And your expectations could look different compared to other teachers. These are not rules. Of course, relationship is the biggest circumstance that surrounds how your students are going to react to your classroom management expectations. But the biggest part to that relationship aspect is respect. And a lot of people don't talk about this as much, but students feel that they have to work so much harder to gain a teacher's respect. Students have to come in automatically respecting the teacher, which isn't always the case. So think about, how you want to be treated, of course, as a teacher, that's how the student wants to be treated as a student. I'm going to break off the behaviors that I'm going to be talking about into two groups. One is our off task behaviors. Those are the ones that we have to manage and deal with the negative behaviors that are happening in your classroom. And the next one is on task behaviors because you want your students to, to shine always and you want to give them some shine when they are shining as a student. So you wanna recognize those on-task behaviors just as much as you recognize the off-task behaviors. So let's go ahead and start up with the off-task behavior. So the first strategy that I have is if you are, if your entire class, the majority of your class is off-task during an independent instruction, then you wanna redirect the entire class. Don't single out students that might be louder than the others or single out students who may be always following this sort of pattern. What you wanna do is make sure that you do a whole group redirect, go back into direct instruction, give them another opportunity to work independently after you, after you maybe go back into direct instruction and to scaffold. The next strategy is if an individual student or maybe a small group of students are off task, 
something that you could do is just go stand near them quietly. Uh, you can tap on their desk, which ha has been a strategy before. Um, and depending on your relationship with the student, you can pat them on the shoulder or the back, depending how comfortable you are with that. Um, and you could also just pull up a chair and work with them. So going and sitting with them and at least until they get a first, so whatever they're supposed to be working on a problem or a question, the first few questions done, you can also even do it together with them to get them going and then circle back around and check on them later and let them know, say, hey, I'm gonna come back and check on you in about three minutes. So and it gives them you know, the opportunity to try to redirect and change their behavior. The next strategy is ignoring behavior. Now, this is usually if there's that one student who seems to be unfocused and really is wanting that attention from the teacher or they want the attention from the classroom. They are tapping their pencil on their desk. They are making noises. They're looking around the room. They're just craving that attention. And so you don't want to give them, give them that individual time while you're trying to direct the whole class. Wait until later, then give them that individual time and say, hey, you know, I noticed you were doing this. What's going on? Try to figure out what's happening before trying to re give them that attention for the whole class. The next one is one of my favorites, and that is the silent stare, which some of my students call it the silent stare of death. So if there's a student who could be that same student who you're trying to ignore, but just won't stop, you could just, just stop without saying anything and stare, which is just like a look, you know, the teacher look that you're giving them. So you give them this look, you stop, you stare, you wait, they're gonna feel uncomfortable and they're gonna correct their behavior. And if they do keep on, that's when you wanna go and individually make sure that you talked with them just one-on-one -on -one silently. The next one is, um, seems like it's a pretty simple strategy, but just making sure that the student has the, proper materials, the, the correct worksheet. They have a pen or a pencil. Their pencil is sharpened. They have the right book. They're on the right page. Whatever the, whatever the situation is, just making sure that they have materials. I have been in many classes and observed to other teachers where students are off task and this teacher doesn't realize it because they didn't do what I'm going to say in my next strategy, but they, the student was just sitting there the entire time and not doing anything because they didn't have a pencil oh. the next strategy that goes along with that is making sure you walk the room i call it working the room you just go around and walk the room and check in with students periodically and you want to do that not right away after the first first initial direction you want to give them some time to get going but Make sure you, after a few minutes, go and start walking around the room and checking in with each student, making sure they have their, their materials, making sure they understand what to do. And if you need to differentiate for a student that's having trouble, you can do that within that moment. The next one is always keeping a quiet space in the room. And I call it the refocus table. My refocus table usually has coloring, worksheets, maybe a word search, um, a place where they can listen to some relaxing music, or a place where they just wanna get away from the, the entire class and just go sit on their own. And you might have one, two, or even three refocus tables in your, in your classroom, but it's very helpful, especially coming from uh, working from home, being on Zoom and Google Classroom, working in an independent environment like that. Coming from that sort of space that we were in recently and having these refocus tables will really help out inside of the classroom because sometimes students just need to get away from other students so they can have their own quiet place and have their own area to work in. The next one's very simple uh, and that is just giving a shout out to students who are doing well students who are on task and do what they're supposed to do. Sometimes that prompts the students who are off task to look around and be like, oh, let me get let me get started, let me get going. And most of the time uh, that does help, especially if you set that expectation and that's been on repeat since the very first week of school. Usually a student will notice that and be like, pop back into place and start getting the work. And next off of that is calling on a student who is doing what they're supposed to do and having them repeat the direction. So students learn best from other students. So having a student repeat the direction or model that behavior that, that what they should be doing 
it works very well. The next one is using exit direction. I always use exit directions because then you don't have to find yourself repeating yourself over and over again. And then if a student doesn't know what to do, you can say, read the board, or you could just point to the board without having to say anything. So those exit directions are there and you wanna have these set up at least the last 15 minutes, 20 minutes of class while students are doing their independent time. And the last one for off task behaviors is calling and emailing home when a student is doing well. So if, especially if you have called or emailed home or sent a note home when the student was doing negative behaviors, you wanna do this just as much as for the positive behaviors and watch that behavior correct so fast once you start doing that. Now I wanna to go to the on-task behaviors and on-task behaviors are those are students who are doing great, who are modeling great behavior. And one of the first strategies that you wanna do, and most of these see they're things that you already know what to do, but you wanna silently go around the room and tell them a verbal praise. Oh, hey, you're doing a good job. Or keep up the good work, this looks excellent whatever whatever you feel like comes to mind you want to give them that verbal positive praise that individual praise to every student even if a student is struggling you want to give them some sort of individual praise the next strategy is giving students positive recognition when it's something tangible like a little piece of candy or maybe it's gum if you guys allow gum in your classroom uh, something that is very helpful for them to feel good about. So if somebody is like, hey, where did you get that gum from? They're like, I got it from Miss Cole because I was, you know, I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. Tangible things work very well, especially at any age. The next strategy for on-task behaviors is one of my favorites and it's easy and simple to do. And then that's giving three to five minutes of free time at the end of class. So just say, hey, I'm gonna give you guys free time for the last few minutes of class. You guys did great today. And you give them some stipulations if they can or cannot get on their phone, whatever the situation might be. Or maybe you just wanna talk with your students. That also works well too. Students love talking to you and getting feedback about just things on life. So giving them that free time to do that works fantastic. The next strategy seems pretty simple, but just being consistent with them and with giving them positive praise, letting them know they're doing a good job, that, they're, that you're proud of them, um, and giving them positive just reinforcement to keep on doing great in the classroom. And those are all my strategies that I have for on-task and off-task behaviors for overall simple classroom management. And if you enjoyed and like these strategies and possibly learned something new, please like and subscribe because I have a lot more teacher strategies coming out every single week.